Hello, my name is Chad Bailwell. In this video, I'm going to walk you over the operation of a convolutional neural network or CNN using a very simple architecture. What we are seeing in front is a simple CNN architecture that has a 4x4 input matrix, which is convoluted with a 2x2 filter, giving us a convolutional map, which is again 2x2. Each element of the convolutional map are passed through the ReLU activation function which is the rectified linear unit. Finally, it goes to a pooling layer where only one value from the ReLU matrix is used, which goes into a fully connected layer, finally giving us the output RFC, which is the output of this uh, CNN. Let us now define what a convolutional operation between two matrices is. So here I have a matrix called I, which is a two by two matrix. I convolute it with uh, made another matrix called F, which is another two by two matrix. By the way, it's imp uh, important to know that the convolutional uh, matrix has to be a square matrix. There are forms where you can operate this on a non-square matrix, but th those are most uh, complex stuff and outside the preview of uh, this video. So once we do a convolutional operation, what we see, we invert this matrix F by 180 degrees. So either ways we can rotate it clockwise or anti-clockwise. If you do that, this element W11 is going to go here, W00 is going to come here, and then W10 and will be here, and W01 will move here. So this on the right-hand side, we see the uh, filter F inverted and the color uh, represents the elements. And then once we do a 180 degree rotation, we do a simple dot operation on the matrix. So what we generally do, we just multiply 100 with W11, 110 with W01, 101 with um, I11, and we sum all of them to give us a single element. So now let us see in a whole CNN how a convolutional operation proceeds. So what we are going to do as defined earlier, this is our input matrix and we have a filter. Uh, this is a convolutional matrix, which is the result of applying a convolutional operation on the input and the filter. Now the size of this convolutional output is defined by a formula and it depends on something called as a stride. A stride is we take this filter over here and slide it over the input matrix. Stride determines how many rows and columns do we skip for each time we do a dot operand on this matrix. So in this case, our stride is going to be two. So in step one, we will multiply W00 with I00 and W10 with I10. Again, uh, after we do the inversion, we invert this matrix by 180 degrees. Once we mul multiply, do a convolutional operation on this input matrix, we are going to slide the filter by two steps, which resulting in this matrix, because we, the leftmost element was here. Now the leftmost element will be here. Once we do that, then we go here. We skip the rows going back to the first column. The leftmost element for the third convolutional operation will be this one. And then the leftmost element for the other last convolutional operation will be this one. So C00 is the result of applying this filter over here on these first four elements. C10 is the result of applying the filter on these elements over here, starting I20, I30, I21, and I31. C01 is now the same operation on this leftmost matrix, the two by two leftmost matrix. And C11 is the result of this. Now let's take a look at it in more detail. So the formula we use in assuming the size of a convolutional matrix is defined by this. N is the size of the convolutional matrix. W is the size of the input matrix. F is the size of the filter. Again, as I mentioned, it's a square matrix. So we just give uh, whether it's a N by N matrix. So we just specify N here. P represents the padding. Now in our case, we are not using any padding. So this will be zero. Stride is the number of cells that we skip uh, when we do each convolutional operation. S is equal to two in our case. So putting these values together in this formula, we have a four by four input matrix. Our filter is two by two. Uh, P is zero 
and then we divide it by the stride 2. So this gives us n is equal to 2, which means that the convolutional matrix is going to be size 2 by 2. And as we can see, as we showed you in the previous picture, this is a 2 by 2 matrix, and this is determined by the formula given here. So let's first do the step one of a convolutional operation. Remember, we have to invert the matrix by 180 degrees. So doing the inversion, this is what uh, the form of the filter looks like. So rather than multiplying W00 with I00, after we flip the matrix, it will be actually W11 that will be multiplied by I00. So the colors here represent the dot products that are actually taken between the filter and the input. So W11 gets multiplied by I00. W01 gets multiplied by I10. W10 gets multiplied by I01. And W00 get multiplied by I11. So the colors yellow gets multiplied by yellow, pink by pink, blue by blue, and the green by green. Then after multiplying, we sum them all together. And this gives us the result C00. So C00 is the sum of dot products of these values between the filter and the matrix. Now, in certain cases, we can normalize the values of C0 where we can divide them by the, you know, some standard constant or by the sum of weights. So there are multiple ways normalization can be done. Okay, so now we have done step one. We got the value of C00. Now we, it's time to get the value of C10. Remember our stride is two. So we are going to slide this matrix two steps, which means the leftmost element will be I20. So now let us look at step two. This is step two. So looking here, we see we do the same operation again. We multiply W11 by I20, W01 by I30, W10 by I21, and W00 by I31, resulting in a matrix C10. So again, see remember how we slid the filter matrix. Earlier, our leftmost element was I00. Now it's I20. So this is step two. In the third operation, think where we are going to go. So we cannot go any point to the right because our input matrix has ended. So we are going to skip two rows. We're going to go down to this row and then skip start from column zero again. So in step three, we are going to multiply this specific matrix with the convolutional filter, the inverted convolutional filter. So this is step three. We again multiply the element shown in pink will be multiplied by the element shown in pink in the input matrix. And doing the same step, we get the value of C01. Similarly, we do the last convolutional operation, which is multiplying this specific matrix with an inverted filter. Again, W11 will be multiplied with I22, W01 with I32, W10 with I23, W00 with I33. So now, as we can see, our convolutional filter is complete. Now it's time for step five, which is we apply the rectified linear unit. Now, rectified linear unit is a simple function uh, which is defined as it's going to be zero if a value is less than zero or zero or negative, and it will be value of x if uh, x is greater than 0. So we can define ReLU as equal to max of 0 or x. So if x is less than equal to 0, actually I should say if x is less than 0, then it's going to be 0. If x is more than 0, it's going to be x. If x is equal to 0, actually ReLU in its pure form is undefined. And there are special cases uh, to handle it, which is uh, outside the preview of this video. Going into step five, now we are going to use a pooling function. What the pooling function does, uh, there are multiple kinds of pooling function, primarily max pool and the average pool are the two common ones. Max pool is a very simple operation that takes these four values and figures out which one is the maximum. 
and then uses that value as the output of the pooling layer. So here RP, which is the output of the pooling layer, is going to be the max of U00, U10, U01, and U11. So whichever of these four values in the ReLU matrix has the maximum numeric value, that will be the output of the pooling layer. Once we get the output of the pooling layer, we pass it to a fully connected layer, which essentially works like a standard neural network where you multiply the input by the specific weight and then use training to uh, fine tune the weight to get the correct value. So now we got the value of RFC. This was one iteration of going through the CNN using one training example. If you have multiple training example, you execute through the same process again. At the end, you try to determine your error and adjust these weights here for the fully connected layer. At this point, this is only one weight, and then also adjust the filter weights so that your error is minimized. If you need more details on this, you can go into my blog, which is at cbailwell.blogspot.com. I've also given the link to this blog in the bottom. Thank you.